Today we're going to talk about math tuning and maybe a different way of doing it. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and the days are getting shorter which means we need to figure out ways to collect data faster that makes bigger changes to shorten up the process. And there's always been something that I've been curious about within these tunes. And by the way, check this out. This is on one of the newer betas and I don't know if it's on every platform but there's now an O2 select menu. If you zero that out, it turns off all of your O2 sensors and puts you in open loop. And as you can see here, it just basically doesn't even bring in the readings. Whereas normally whenever we fail open loop, it'll still bring in those readings. This way, it just disables the whole system. It's kind of cool. And we'll talk about this log here in a second. But the other thing that I've been wondering about, and I've never really touched on, is the mass, uh, the mass airflow air mass filter. That's a mouthful. But as you can see down here, whenever you mouse over it, it talks about the purpose of it is uh, is used to filter the mass airflow in case of a TPS or manifold air pressure sensor failure. Well, obviously we can't fail the TPS because it just puts the car into lip mode all the time. And being that this is an LT4, failing the map isn't really that easy because there's multiple sensors involved with that. So the first question I kind of had was, does this actually matter whenever we force it over into high speed mode all the time like we do underneath uh, the dynamic airflow? So. I just pulled a log with this thing set to the base set point, which is 0 0.0570. We're gonna go ahead and default this thing over to one, which theoretically should do all the math filtering. I'm not quite sure. And we're going to pull another log and do a comparison. We've kind of got a reading here of what it's like, uh, and we're, we're, we're rich across the board. You know, we're, we're going to, Look at this log, do a comparison. There's a couple lean spikes in here. That may have been because I was paddle shifting and causing it to downshift and spike real high in there. So bad data capturing on my part. That's something you don't want to do whenever you're catching the mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensors are very, uh, you know, you have to be very smooth. Fluid airflow is what you're looking for. Transient will completely break the data log process of it. So no sharp uh, throttle transitions, no flipping the downshift throttle, you know, from third to second in a corner and letting it shoot the revs up, you're going to get that bad data. And we can talk about some of the ways to filter that data out in another video, but even accelerator pedal filters in this case would not filter that data out. So we would have to set up filters around, you know, shifts or something like that, which gets into a ballpark of a lot of interesting math on the filter side. You're better off just going out there and actually driving sane, you know, Whenever you need to get out there and start getting that high airflow stuff, force it into a high gear and kind of load it up and let it pull all the way to the red line and in fourth gear or something like that. So uh, the only things, as I said, that we've changed on this is we're updating the mass air, the math air mass filter, blah, to one. We're gonna save this and load it in. Everything else is set up like a standard mass airflow tune. So, you know, go to tuning101.com and choose your generation platform if you need more information on how to set those up. My guess is this is not gonna exist on the third gen. It's gonna start in the fourth gen and then carry over to the fifth gen. And it may absolutely do nothing. That's why we do test and tunes to try out these new parameters, or it may give us completely different data. If it does, that doesn't mean it's the correct data but all we can do is go ahead and collect the data, do a comparison, and then try to figure out which one is the data that we want. So I'm gonna load this in, then we're gonna to get to driving. Okay, right away the data is looking kind of the same. We're very rich, but it's hunting, which it normally does not do, which is very interesting. So there is something a little bit wonky going on here. You can hear it and see it on the graph. It's really doing a lot of hunting. So the drive process might be very interesting. The thing may not want to drive at all. Oh yeah, it is not happy. Okay, without digging any further into this, it didn't work, but now the question's gonna be, let's kick it over to zero and see how it responds that way. Thank you. 
Now the car won't even run. So it's very interesting. There is something going on with this mass airflow filter that is affecting how the mass airflow calculates air. You know, I'd be interested to see now that the filter is set to zero, let's go ahead and just log a start and see what it looks like. Always learn these new things. It just will not run. Okay. The mass airflow is way off from the dynamic. Well, let's split the difference. Let's do a 0.5. Let's write that in. And see if we can get it running on 0.5, which is still significantly higher than what it was stock. Remember, it was like 0.05 stock. And so... We're still changing some kind of calculation in the background that determines how our final airflow calculation is actually calculated. So something's going to happen. And one of the things I noticed that I didn't pay attention to earlier, it says it is also used to filter the mass airflow air mass when the engine RPM is greater than the hard RPM disable limit, which it is because we're in high speed mode. So that could be part of it. Whenever we set that to zero, that filter is basically shutting it off. Let's see if we can get this thing to start now. Okay, we're up and running now. She wasn't happy for a second. And it's up and running a lot smoother. So it's very interesting. But it still makes me wonder, maybe if we were to try and tune with it set to one, if it would tune faster because it would use less dynamic airflow. I will say that our values seem to be somewhat in line, but it is hunting a lot less on this setting. So we're running real low on gas. Let's go ahead and run down to the gas station, collect data the entire way. And then let's see what it looks like whenever we get there. Oh, it does not. It does not run well. In fact, we just set a check engine light. This is interesting stuff. Let's see what check engine light we got. Okay, we got P0121. Yeah, the rest of these are just flash errors but the p0121 is an actual issue because it's basically saying that we're having throttle performance issues the, I, the car is just not going to drive with that that setting changed so i wonder if we can tweak it in a way that makes sense so if we go back Let's do a, open up a compare file here, take a look at an earlier version where we've got this 0 0.0570. Let's just try a 0.1. Essentially, let's just double it and see what it does then. Because it has been anything but drivable with changing this value which means it is affecting our final airflow calculations in some ways. Whether or not it's over filtering and it's causing it to respond too slow, which makes me think might be happening, where whenever we're jacking this filter up really high, it's causing the mass airflow calculations to take longer to update uh, than it normally would. I think that that might be what's causing the issue with the higher numbers. So we're going from a, a basically, we went to a 0.5, it was still having drivability issues. We're going down to a 0.1, which is double about what stock is now. We're going to see whether or not that's going to let us go ahead and drive uh, and collect data on it. Okay, we're up and running. The first thing that you notice is we're only populating two data cells at idle, whereas beforehand that thing was just jumping around. So it almost seems like this is filtering the input signal from the mass airflow sensor, which isn't Hertz, which would make sense because as much as Hertz can jump around, uh, you want to smooth that thing out. And it's almost to the point where maybe whenever we're going higher on the filter number, it's allowing it to read too much in that range. So we have a wave scale here that's uh, based on 
how wide or narrow it is, it is calculating that hertz. And as it gets, you know, closer and closer, it's going to be higher in the airflow calculation. And so because of that, it's causing that thing to read a bunch of stuff kind of on the periphery that might be considered error by taking a window shot of it and reading what the hertz is. And that window may only be like a couple milliseconds. It's really smoothed this thing out. Theoretically, if that is the case, then lowering the number is actually what we would want to do uh, because, well, no, it wouldn't. Lowering the number is just going to make it filter more, whereas we would want to raise the number up to a certain point where we're collecting more data in the range. I don't know. Very interesting. Hit up the comments and let me know what your thoughts are. Let's get a log on it and see if it'll drive now that we've just doubled the setting. Okay, much better. Actually has some drivability. Might still be a little bit, uh, might still be a little bit over responsive to the throttle. It might be pulling in some false data in there, but I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to be one of those things that requires a lot of toying around with to see if it has any benefit to tweaking during the tuning process. My guess is even if we found a benefit during the tuning process, whenever we got done, this is one of the other parameters that we would just set back to stock and let it operate normally whenever it is doing its thing. Uh, because as I said, whenever we have normal set points kind of for dynamic airflow, we are switching over into the filtered mass airflow but at the same time, maybe there is a area where the mass airflow can be adjusted, handle transients better. I'm not sure. That's, that's kind of, once again, why we do these things, to figure these things out and see if there's something new that we can learn about how to better modify our cars. Okay, we've made it to the gas station and right away, yeah, the data is different. This is very interesting. The data in the back window, here's the stuff after adjusting the mass airflow filter, whereas the stuff on the four window is pre with the stock settings in there. And starting just at 1800, which is around the hertz that this thing idles at, we're reading a 6% difference, basically five and a half to 6% difference. And that is pretty consistent all the way through. In fact, let's go up here towards some of the top end data that's consistent. We'll start at like 4350. Let's drag this one over to 4350. And the data looks so much better with the filter changed. Everything is a lot closer. That's very interesting. And kind of, it's kind of a head scratcher. It's kind of got me thinking about this. Like, why would the data that theoretically is using the same airflow table to calculate the fuel delivery be 5% difference between one and the other? Well, it's got to be volumetric efficiency. That's what it has to be. It's got to be how much of this is leaning back on the VE table in order to make up the rest of the data. As we've talked about in the past, you're never just in strict math only mode. The VE table is always present. Even whenever we're in a theoretically disabled mode, the VE is part of it. It is affecting our dynamic output. Now, whenever we do fail the mass airflow sensor, yes, we are in speed density only, we're only using the volumetric efficiency table at that point in time to calculate the fuel. But the question is now, is the VE table the problem or is it the solution? By filtering more with the second data log, are we relying more on the VE table that's closer because it's been tweaked a little bit more than the mass airflow? I, I, I will say that neither of these really have been tweaked much at all. Or is the mass airflow table the problem? I think that the next logical step is to go ahead and use the data from the, uh, the filter change, copy that in and paste it to the mass airflow system and use it a couple times to make adjustments to the mass airflow and then go back and do volumetric efficiency. And theoretically, whenever you come back to mass airflow from volumetric efficiency, the change shouldn't be as big. We've talked about in the past that you do mass airflow first, then you do volumetric efficiency, but you have to go back and do mass airflow again because of that additional data that's being used to calculate your dynamic airflow 
kind of trickling over into your mass airflow uh, data logs that we're, we're containing here. So whenever you do a math only tune, yeah, you're, you're, you're correcting that for the bad volumetric efficiency table. But since we don't do that because we like drivability, we have to go back and fix that volumetric efficiency, which in turn, we have to come back and fix the mass airflow. Theoretically though, by adjusting the math filter, like we have done here, whenever we do the math tuning, then do the volumetric efficiency, then return to the math, the air should be closer. We should have less of an adjustment that we have to make out the backside because we have filtered out more of the volumetric efficiency and used more of the mass airflow. Now, whether or not the uh, lowered value that we had on the original data log that shows that we're seven to you know eight percent off was correct, or the higher value that shows we're two to three percent off is correct. That's going to be the question. I guess we're just going to have to keep on logging and seeing. But for now, this video is already running long enough, so I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, you've tried this yourself, let me know down in the description what your thoughts are. The comments, what your thoughts are, and. I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.